Welcome to Total Tech. It's day one the Audi Q7. This is a 4L that we have here and we're going to be showing you how to remove the clock spring also known as the squib. Let's go. So for the removal of the airbag we need to make sure that we follow Audi's safety instruction guidelines when it comes to working on these airbag systems. And essentially what that means when it comes to working on these airbags is you must disconnect the negative connection on the car battery. The reason being is that an airbag needs both a positive and a negative to be able to fire. So by disconnecting the negative, that means that it's impossible for the airbag system to fire. And so therefore, once we have that negative connection disconnected, it's now safe to work on the airbag. However, before we do that, there's a couple of things that we need to bear in mind. First of all, we're going to move the steering wheel as far forward as possible and also as far down as possible to give us the best access to the fixings that are holding this airbag in place. And then in addition to that, on these cars, they have an electric steering lock. And so you actually need to leave the key in the ignition. So the process is going to be, we'll put the key in, we'll adjust the steering wheel as far forward, as far down as possible. And then whilst the key is in, we will disconnect the negative connection from the battery. So grab your key, put it in, turn it to position number one. So next, move your steering wheel all the way forward, which ours already is, and all the way down. So the battery on the Q7 is actually located under the driver's seat. But don't worry, we don't have to strip all this down to access the battery itself. There's actually a shortcut for disconnecting the negative on these vehicles, which is exactly what Audi do when they ship these from when they're brand new. So first of all, just lift your mat up and slide that forward. Then we can see in front of the seat, we've got these two plastic panels, one here towards the outside and one on the inside towards the center console here. And the one that we need to remove is the inner one, the one tucked in right next to the center console here. Now to remove this, it does have a couple of uh, clips in it. Just get your fingers under the edge, just lift it straight up. You'll feel the clips pop out. There's the first one. There's the second one. My clip fell out there. I'm just going to slide that back in. That's what we have. We have these two metal clips here and there's the little uh, holes just in here that these slot into. One here and another here. Uh, but you can remove this plate without having to remove this panel. And then this is the shortcut that I mentioned for the negative battery terminal. If you disconnect this, it kills the negative supply completely from the battery. Quick word of warning when you disconnect this, very similar to when you're disconnecting it from the battery. When it touches and untouches the uh, terminal, uh, it may well spark. So be warned of that ahead of time. So when you remove it from the post, try and keep it as far away from the post as possible to stop it keep going back and touching it. And remember, at this stage, we're going to be disconnecting this with the key in the ignition. That's very, very important because we need the steering lock to remain unlocked. So this gets disconnected stick with the key in the ignition, still turned to position number one. So this is size 13. I'm just pushing the uh, strap down to make sure I keep connection. Let's remove the... Uh, bolt cap off the top here. And then lift this off. Put it to one side and push the uh, mat back down on it to ensure that this can't come back and accidentally touch the post here. So we now need to rotate our steering wheel by 90 degrees. We need these sides facing directly upwards. So that's perfect there. So now if you have a look on the rear of the steering wheel, uh, just above the cowl here, uh, you'll be able to see there's actually a little hole in the rear of the steering wheel. And you'll be able to see there's like a metal bar in there. And we need to lever that metal bar. Now as per the instructions in the Audi workshop manual, when you're levering this, you should not use a flat head screwdriver. The technical reason being 
that that flathead screwdriver, because obviously it's very narrow, might be able to slip in and cause damage to the wiring inside the airbag system. So instead they recommend to get a Torx size 25, which is exactly what we have here. The reason that they say this is because basically the end of it is round. And so it's not like a slot and this uh, size here, T25, is too big to fit between any of the components. So this won't be able to slip past anything like a flathead screwdriver might be able to. What you want to do is try and come in at a slight angle from behind it. You need to hook it onto the top of that metal bar and then you're going to be levering it downwards. So we've now got this uh, disconnected on the one side. Now if you're struggling, the, uh, the key to it, when you uh, hook onto that, that metal bar that's going across the back, if you hook in behind it, what can happen as you push it down, you actually get stuck in behind it and then obviously the airbag can't move forward. So what you've got to try and do is actually come on the bar, push it down without coming in behind it. And then once you manage to slide it down, force it down, pin it down as hard as you can and then come and give this a bit of a wiggle on the side and that will move that bar forward and it will come from within this but if you're hooked in behind it obviously that can't move forward so that's the main thing to bear in mind so now I need to rotate this through 180 degrees so we can do exactly the same on the clip on the opposite side and do remember that on this second clip when you push it obviously that's going to release on this side you can't just remove the airbag straight away from the car we do have electrical connectors connected to the rear of the airbag Again, come in on that metal bar, push it down, but don't be sure not to come in behind it. Pin it down and then move the front there. Now if you pull your airbag gently forward, I'll show the electrical connectors. Now the main one, you'll notice when you look in there yourself, there are two electrical connectors on the uh, back of the airbag itself. You want to ignore those. The one that you're looking for is this yellow one tucked in at the back here. Now you notice on this yellow connector, you've got this little purple tab just here. What you need to do is you need to come in behind that, lift that purple tab up, that's a little locking tab, and then you'll be able to remove this connector. There's the yellow connector. Now it takes a bit of a, a wiggle to get it out. But there you go. And also if you do have Tiptronic, like we have on this one, you're going to have an extra electrical connector hidden in just behind it here. And on this electrical connector, you see we've got a little security pin. You can see a little metal bit just in the centre there. So we need to ensure that we lift this plastic up a little bit so we can slide the plug out. So we can lift it up just enough. Give it a bit of a push forward at the same time. That's disconnected. Now if you are struggling to get the airbag disconnected, uh, here's a quick view of how these fixings work. So on the rear of the airbag, literally, we have these metal bars. And what you're doing when you're pushing in from the back, you're actually pushing these in directly in this direction, in towards the centre of the airbag. And this is actually hooked over this little metal bracket here in the back of the steering wheel. So what you need to do is push that metal bar down so it aligns with the slot here and then once it's aligned that's when you grab the airbag and you give it a bit of a pull from the front. But that's literally all we're trying to do is to unhook this metal bar from this small catch here at the back of the wheel. And so that's your airbag removed from the car and good to go. So with our airbag out of the way we can see what's actually holding our steering wheel on and we have this large bolt right in the centre there. So for the removal of this bolt, uh, what we actually need is one of these, and this is called a spline bit, also sometimes called a triple square bit. And this is a 12 uh, point bit, and uh, the size that we need is M12. Now thankfully these bits aren't very expensive, you can buy a complete set of these for around $15 on Amazon. But it is essential to remember that the set that you buy must have the M12 size, because that's what's required for this job. And we will be adding Amazon links into the video descriptions for sets of these spline bits. And the sets that we'll be adding those Amazon links for will be the cheapest available on Amazon and also will definitely contain your M12. So if this video is helpful for you, please be sure to help support us and be sure to use our Amazon links. 
So now you want to grab your wrench and your spline bit. Spline bit obviously goes into the centre here. And you want to use an extension bar. The reason being, if you're trying to put that in there, what you're going to be doing is rubbing that against the nice leather finish of your steering wheel. So get a nice extension bar in there so that the handle's definitely not going to rub against your steering wheel. Now when we're turning this, we do have to remember that we've purposefully left the key in the ignition as per the Audi workshop instructions. So when we turn this, it will want to move the steering wheel. And of course, because that steering lock is off, there's nothing to stop it. And so you may well find you're most likely going to have to counter hold the steering wheel when you undo this bolt. Now, one really important thing is once this bolt's removed, do not remove the steering wheel from the vehicle. And there's a very, very important reason why that we'll cover when we get to that stage. But do not be tempted as soon as this uh, bolt comes out to take the steering wheel away from the car. Leave it in place. So make sure that your steering wheel is definitely not going to come off with the bolt. Let's bring the bolt gently forward. And that's our bolt removed. Now you might be wondering what this uh, blue stuff is that we have on here. Uh, this is actually a thread lock. This is a temporary uh, thread lock. And what that, that does, it essentially helps prevent uh, these kind of fixings from ever becoming uh, loose due to kind of rattling loose, if that makes any sense. So when you come to reinstall this, you may well want to put a spot of thread lock back onto this bolt. But you need to make sure that it's temporary or semi-permanent. You do not want to use the permanent stuff because the permanent thread lock is basically like glue and then you're likely to really struggle to get this out again. So be sure to use the temporary stuff. And again, we will add Amazon links to this in the video description. So if you do need to pick up some of this uh, thread lock, the temporary one, then you'll find those Amazon links in the video description. Now, the reason that we don't remove the steering wheel straight away is because if you look around the outside of this, you'll notice just how fine the, uh, the teeth are that are in there. And so if you just pull this steering wheel off, do whatever work you need to do and then come back. Yet you can kind of try and put it on straight, but you might be off by one or two teeth in either direction accidentally. And then, of course, your steering wheel is no longer straight. And because these increments are so tiny, it's actually very easy to do. So it's very important that we actually mark the end of the steering column here relative to our steering wheel before we remove it so that when we come to refit it, we've got a nice mark that we can line everything back up to and make sure we get it 100%. So to mark this up, if you look at the actual base of the steering wheel itself, you'll notice that it does come with a line uh, right in the uh, center, just in there. And that uh, indicates the exact dead center of the steering wheel, but not the uh, uh, steering column, which is this silver ring that we have on the inside here. So what we need to do is grab a fine marker pen and we're going to extend this line that we have already on the steering wheel straight down onto this steering column here. So we're actually going to put a little line there. So when we come to uh, line it back up, we'll have a mark on the end of our steering column. And of course, we've already got our line built into the steering wheel. So we just line those back up. So I'm going to grab a fine marker and I'm going to extend this line down. Now, because you're kind of viewing it at a slight angle, it may well look uh, to your view that it's not quite straight. But because I'm looking straight at it, I'm going to ensure that it is in the right place. So it might not look quite right to you, but when you come to do it yourself, obviously you'll be looking straight at it and you'll be able to get it spot on. So now we've marked our line, we can go ahead and just pull the steering wheel forward to remove it from the car. And that is our steering wheel completely removed and good to go. So now we've got that steering wheel out of the way, you can see we've got all the access we need to the cowls. Now there's a very specific tool that we're going to need to be able to get these cowls off and that's because there are two screws that are accessed from underneath here and here and these screws are all the way up here and they are literally connecting the top and bottom cowls together. And what we need is a very small Torx bit. This is actually a Torx T8. However, on the Q7, this type of tool does throw up a little issue. This is 2.95 inches in length, and you can buy these on Amazon uh, for about three or four dollars. However, unfortunately, on the Q7 here, these will do uh, A4s and things like that. On the Q7, they don't quite reach because of the thickness of the handle. And so what we need to get instead is actually something like this. 
All this is, this is a T8 bit. It's like a standard screwdriver bit. You can put this into a ratcheting screwdriver. As you can see, of course, we have the long blade. Now you can buy sets of these, these long ones are on Amazon, and they're about $10 for a complete set that includes the T8. And we will be adding Amazon links into the video description for these. So if you do need a set, please help to support what we do here, and please be sure to use our Amazon links. And so just carefully feed this up and have a feel. You need to ensure that it locks into the head of the screw just there. And then attach your uh, screwdriver, whatever it is you're going to be unscrewing with. And then we can start to unscrew this screw. You can see the uh, top and bottom halves coming apart there. The screws are fairly long, so give it a, a bit more than you think. You just hear the uh, screw clicking now. Shows are at the end of the thread, so that one's now done. The screws don't always come out straight away. That's not a problem, they probably will in a second. Now do exactly the same on the other side. Now if you lift your top, you'll be able to see, yep, we're definitely disconnected. We have one screw that's just falling out there, and the other one will probably come out in a second. So our screws are definitely completely disconnected. So next, if you have a manually adjusting steering column, uh, you will have a lever right in the center run, that runs in this direction right here. Now this particular car has a fully electric steering column, so we can't demonstrate this for you. But if you have a manual column, you'll have this handle, and obviously normally you flick that handle down, make the adjustments and push it back up to lock it in place. And if you come underneath and have a look at that handle, you'll notice that it has two screws in the actual handle itself. And if you undo those two screws, that will allow you to remove the handle. You need to remove the handle, otherwise the cowl won't be able to go over the handle. The handle's bigger than the slot in the cowl. That's all you need to do, dead simple. Two screws, and that will allow the plastic handle to be removed. So on our lower cowl, we actually have two uh, screws right in at the back, tucked up right the way under here. And these two screws that are up in here, they have a hex head, so you want to grab yourself a size uh, 8 bit and an extension bar. Careful not to drop these screws on the way out. And there we are. Now do exactly the same thing, get that second screw removed. As you remove this uh, second screw, just make sure you uh, support the cowl, because the cowl will be wanting to drop off as the screw comes out. Be careful as you lower the uh, cowl down, because you may well have an electrical connector in there. Here you can see our electrical connector. This is because we have the uh, electric uh, adjustment for the steering column here. A little air tab just in the top of this connector. Let's push that down, pull the connector backwards, and then that's the lower cowl removed. And you notice when I was uh, dropping this down, uh, it was stuck to the top cowl because on this side it's hooked in, on the opposite side it's completely different. On this side, it's actually hooked in, so you kind of got to separate the two up in this uh, corner just at the back here to be able to drop this down properly. So basically I had everything that was dropped down but it was holding on in this corner. So you have to disconnect those two and that allows you to bring it down further and out. And then for the upper cowl, if you're uh, removing this just to gain access, what I'd recommend doing is just folding it backwards and just leaving it in that position so you can go ahead and work on whatever it is you need to focus on. If however you do want to remove this, maybe you need to replace it, then what you can do is just grab this section here and start to pull it gently forward. And you find that this whole section will actually pop out. So be careful with it. And you'll do exactly the same on the opposite side here. Gently pull it forward. Now 
and then that allows you to remove this whole piece. Now the way this is held in on the cowl itself on either side you've got these two metal compression fixings and those little tabs fit into these two holes that we have here and here. And it's literally just push and snap in. And then in addition across the top edge here uh, you've got these two uh, little holes on the cowl here as well as a tab on either side. And you've got two little guiding tabs those fit into the two holes that are on the cowl on the outside this is where they snap in on either edge and that's it. Now before we go ahead and disconnect the electrical connectors we're going to follow the Audi workshop manual and that tells you to make sure that you're discharged from any static electricity so remove your glove just touch the uh, strike plate that will ensure you have no static electricity so now in theory you're safe to go ahead and get the electrical connectors disconnected. So we've got this yellow connector here that runs off the uh, back of the uh, clock spring and this has a little uh, security tab on it but unfortunately it's up on the underside. So grab a hook tool, it's a little bit of a fiddle, you need to come underneath and try and find that security catch there and then the whole thing will slide off. I'll show you that in just a second. So there's the underneath, so you need to get your hook tool in just in there and then force that backwards until it clicks and then that will allow the plug to be removed. And then next we have a second electrical connector right here and if you look on the back of that it does have a little uh, security tab that needs to be pushed uh, in this direction. There's that little security tab just there. Now on the opposite side we have this larger electrical connector again it does have a security tab it's quite easy to pinch with your hand this one just put your finger in pull that down get the whole thing a wiggle backwards and that's that disconnected and that's the uh, the tab on this one so now we have a screw on the underside just here and it's a hex head screw so grab a hex bit or a hex screwdriver pop that in we need to get this screw removed So now we can draw this whole unit gently forward and you'll find that where the electrical wire passes through, it passes through like a little plastic bracket, if you just push that backwards gently, that will just pop off of the rear, that's this plastic bracket just here, it had our electrical connectors connected to it, it just snaps gently into the back so you can just push that back, carry on drawing this forward and that is our entire unit there removed from the car. So now from this stage what we can do is we can take this over to our bench and start stripping this down to remove the parts that we need access to. So the way that our clock spring is attached to this main unit does actually uh, plug into our steering wheel sensor at the back here. But there's some plastic tabs that are holding it in place. Now you've got one here on the bottom and then also on either side you've got these uh, identical ones right here. You can ignore the, uh, the two that we have on top, uh, those aren't actually holding it in. So it's the bottom one and the side two. So start on this uh, bottom tab here, small flathead screwdriver. Just lift that up whilst pulling the unit gently forward, just enough to disengage it, like that. And then come to one of your sides, doing exactly the same thing. You're only pulling it forward a little bit, just enough to disengage that plastic tab. And then finally, the tab on the other side, again, gently lift that out, just pulling gently forward. So now you can just pull the whole thing forward, and these electrical connections will unplug from the uh, points where they go into your, uh, your uh, ECU here, and that is the uh, clock spring removed. So when it comes to replacing your clock spring there's one very important thing to bear in mind if you've bought one of these used to replace your broken one. Now the potential problem is if you bought a used one you don't know for a fact what position the steering wheel was in when they actually removed the clock spring from the car. Now you would hope that the steering wheel was perfectly straight when they removed it but you just don't know for certain. And so what can happen if this actually isn't in, in its central position, then you can fit this to the car, spin your steering wheel, and you'll overturn this and you can break this quite easily. So it's really important that we do a check to make sure if you've got a used one, that it's definitely in the centered position before you fit it to the car. Now thankfully it's actually quite easy to do. What we need to do 
is ensure that we can do one and a half turns in both directions from the central position here. And when it comes to setting this, you'll notice that it does have quite a lot of uh, movement in it. There's a, a lock at either side of it and it locks it into this position. So when you turn it back to center, it doesn't matter whether you're a millimeter off this way, a millimeter off that way, it really doesn't matter. You've got quite a lot of play in what uh, is referred to as dead center. So you don't need to be 110% accurate when you come to place this back to the center anywhere in that location is fine. So to get around these locks, it's actually got this little uh, spring catch right here. And all you do is you press that down and that will uh, disengage the lock. And that's the equivalent of having the steering wheel on. When you put the steering wheel on, it presses this button down and then this will be free to turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this button down and we're gonna turn this and make sure we can go one and a half turns and then we'll bring it back one and a half turns, release the button so we know we're dead center again. And then we'll repeat that going the opposite way and then make sure that we bring it back to the center again. And when you are turning this, turn it fairly slowly and gently. What you don't wanna do is whip it round because if you are at the end of the spring, if it's not actually straight, if this was removed and the steering wheel was locked over in one direction, then again, you can damage this clock spring. So be quite gentle when you do this process. So I'm going to go to uh, the right clockwise first of all. So I'm going to press this down, turn in this direction. There's, there's half. There's one. There's one and a half. So we know we're definitely good in that direction. So bring us back to the center now. So that's my half. Half and my final one. That's one and a half turns. So we know that to the right, we're spot on. So now we need to do exactly the same to the left. There's half. There's one. And there's half. So we'll take that back. Half, half, and half. That's one and a half. And we're back and locked in back to that central position. So we know uh, definitely that this is okay. This was definitely removed uh, in the central position. Most will be, hopefully nine out of 10, but if you get one that was locked when it was removed by the, the breaker's yard or whatever, like I said, if you fit it, you can break it. So it's worth doing that. It takes 30 seconds, gonna save you a lot of headache. So to refit the unit, simply slide it down the steering column, nice and gently, make sure it seats properly into place. And then we have this uh, plastic bracket with our two electrical connectors, and also the, uh, the wire for the uh, column adjustment there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, install the bracket before you install the connectors. So slide that down into place. It's got a little tab on there either side, and it should just click into place. There and there nice and flush here across the back. So now the electrical connectors, do the black one first. Just push that in until it clicks. And remember with the yellow connector, we have this uh, little security tab. So once we've put our connector on, we need to push that tab back in. First of all, we've got this cable here. This is for the uh, electric steering column adjustment. I'm just gonna push this back, make sure it's behind our electrical uh, connect connector plug here. So it's rooted in down the back of the unit, comes out the bottom here. Then we take our large black connector, line that up, push that all the way in. And next up, we've got this little screw, holds it in place. that up, not over tight, it's just holding it in place. So for refitting the cowls, remember we've got these uh, these metal clips uh, on either side, right here, and also in addition to that we've got these little plastic tabs, male and female, there's the male ones, we have got these two little uh, locating tabs, these two little holes here, those are the female ones. And on either side of the steering wheel, this is where these metal clips are going to go into, upper and lower, identical on both sides. Just under the dash, you've got these two little tabs sticking out. Those are going to locate into those two little holes. And then the, uh, the male versions are just going to click in uh, underneath the, uh, the edge, just there. 
And when this goes in, I just make sure you're aligning everything. There's actually another little tab I haven't noticed there. Another little tab here locates into this little silver tab there. And remember, you've got these. They all need to locate into the uh, correct locations uh, before you snap it into place. Sure everything looks correct before you snap these tabs into place make sure you're happy that everything's located as it should and then press these metal tabs in snap into place on both sides perfect and then for the bottom cowl I uh, remember we've got this uh, little hook now looking at it I think this one's yes yeah, actually been snapped off it should have a hook on uh, both sides and looking at the top cowl, this is where these uh, these little hooks that are on the bottom cowl actually need to hook into this section right here. Remember, if you've got the electric steering column like we have, we've got one electrical connector. Need to ensure that we get that plugged in uh, before this goes back together. Just a quick tip for you when you're refitting your bottom cowl. Uh, right here is where those two screws uh, go into, uh, right at the back of the lower cowl. And what we have is we actually have these little uh, metal clips and this is what they screw into and these uh, just sit on these uh, metal tabs uh, with a hole in the uh, center of them so these just snap on like that and just sit in place like that and when you slide your uh, your cowl back down it's very easy to actually ping these off and of course if you uh, ping these uh, little clips off then you won't have any thread to uh, screw the uh, screws into so before you uh, put your lower cowl in just have a look down here make sure these look to be in the uh, correct position and when you're sliding your lower cowl in, just bear in mind uh, to try, and it's difficult not to try and knock these off. These can be uh, a little bit tricky. And if you do pop one off, it's not the end of the world. Just grab your magnet tool. They usually fall straight down there, and you can normally just grab them from down the, uh, down the bottom there. Uh, but you want to make sure that they're definitely in place before you start, otherwise you've got nothing to screw into. So once you've got your bottom one roughly in place, bring the top one down to it and hook the uh, top one onto the bottom one. So once you're happy with the position, we need to uh, get the uh, little screws back in uh, to hold these two halves together. Don't over tighten them, remember these are metal screws into plastic. Snug them up till they stop, don't over tighten. So for refitting our steering wheel, remember we've made our little mark on the end of the column there. And we also have a little mark in the center of the wheel. So what we're going to do is line those two up and press it gently forward. So make sure your clock spring is definitely in the uh, 12 o'clock position. This square one at the top, this needs to pass through this hole. Get your marks lined up. Push into place. Now for the reinstallation of your bolt, uh, the Audi Workshop manual recommends uh, that you replace this uh, with a brand new one every time this is removed. However, in reality, uh, these probably aren't replaced every time and we're not going to be replacing this. However, what you should do, uh, if you're able, is to actually replace this uh, this blue uh, material that they put on there. This is uh, called a nut lock, uh, sometimes also called thread lock, but it needs to be a non-permanent type. Because when it comes to these uh, thread locks, they do make non-permanent and permanent. And obviously permanent is literally permanent. It's, a, it's almost like a glue. So if you put the permanent one in there, screw that in there, then you're going to have problems getting this out the next time. But of course, if you use the proper stuff for the job, which is the non-permanent, then it's designed to be removed. So this will go in, do the job, and then you will be able to get it out in the future. And the reason that they actually put this uh, on there is it basically stops this bolt 
from ever, uh, although it's highly unlikely, from ever being able to work itself loose just by kind of rattling itself loose. Uh, having that in there is just like a little bit of uh, extra security, so that's why they use this uh, this thread lock. Thankfully, it's not very expensive. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, and we will be adding some uh, Amazon links into the video description uh, for the uh, thread lock for you. And the links that we'll put will definitely be the non-permanent type. So I'm going to put a little bit of my uh, thread lock on here. You don't need to put it all the way around. Just a little bit. Oh, that's plenty. Like that. And as you turn that around, that will work its way uh, around the threads. But you just need it a tiny little bit. That's uh, borderline too much, but that's that's okay. Like I said, don't do it all the way around. It doesn't need it. As you screw this in, it will work its way around the thread. And carefully screw this back into place. I'm going to need to get a torque wrench to torque this up to the uh, correct uh, factory specification. So I'm going to get this snugged up. Remember your uh, steering lock won't be on at this stage, so this will actually want to turn the steering wheel so you can counter hold the steering wheel as you snug this up. So now you need to grab your torque wrench. This needs to be torqued up to 50 newton meters, which is 37 foot pounds. So to refit the airbag, uh, we need to uh, reconnect the wiring. Remember we've got this square connector here, which you may or may not have, uh, depending on what options you have on your car. And we've got the main yellow connector here, and this does have this uh, security tab. So remember, once this is fitted in, you must snap that security tab back into place. So when you connect this square one up, which connects into the bottom, you can kind of see there's a little uh, place for it to slot into. So you've kind of got to get it fitted, but then also get that stuck back in the right position uh, in the center lower half of the wheel here. So just make sure you don't leave this connector flapping around because you may struggle to get the airbag back on. It should be fitted nice and properly into the little slot there. So on this square connector you've got the, uh, the metal part which is only on the one side and in the middle of that you've got that little uh, that little lump, that little bump there and that needs to come through the uh, hole which is actually on the, uh, the back. So that's the way around that we need to connect this up. Space will be limited to so make sure your airbag's up the right way. The word airbag we got here. Obviously that needs to be so you can read it. And then we're going to plug this uh, yellow connector back in and then snap in the security plug. Then just feed your airbag slowly back into place. We need to get these, uh, these two metal arms that we removed earlier. They're going to snap back in over those little tabs in the back of the wheel. So if you, you can kind of feel when they're in there be in the right place you're not down too low you're not up too high those tabs kind of lock almost into place there the whole thing should feel right and then we can give it a push and note there is a little bit of movement in it so yours is if yours is sat a little bit low like mine is here I can just see that if you just manipulate it into place a little bit you should be able to get a nice finish like that and there we have it, that is job done. If this video has been helpful, please be sure to at the very least hit that like button for us to help us out in return. And also be sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got hundreds of Audi and VW videos on our channel and on our website, just waiting for you to take a look at. And if we've really helped you out, please don't forget there is the super thanks option. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again.